Hi everyone, happy Thursday. Um, I am going to chat today about a few really important things that I've gotten questions on recently. And this is actually a really big topic for a lot of people who are in the health field and who are in the um, wellness field. Oh look, it says this is my 100th broadcast. Oh, that's so cute. Sorry. <laughs> Facebook gives you these little notifiers sometimes when you're doing a live video, so that's kind of fun. Anyway, so um, talking about supplements, nutrients, why you need to add to your nutrient diet, all these other things. So a lot of this information um, is, is in my upcoming book and honor my upcoming book, The Female Fat Solution, which you can check out more information on my website. It's www.drbethwesty.com. And I talk about nutrition, exercise, mindset pieces that actually match with your natural hormones. So women have different hormones every week. So you can be switching how you eat every week to match your hormones, to maximize your health, your energy, your weight loss, everything else, and working with your body. So fantastic information there. But today I'm talking about um, supplements and if you really need nutrients, add it into your diet and add it into what your daily regimen is. This is a conversation that I myself went back and forth on for a really long time. And once I actually really dove into the research, um, I found that, yeah, this is, this is really different. Now, people can argue that you get all the nutrients that you need from food, that you can do that. And I'm thinking, okay, you know what? That is possible. That is absolutely possible to have that happen, that your body gets every single nutrient that it needs to function at its best all the time from the food that you're eating. That's a whole heck of a lot of food, though. That's a whole lot of time and planning. And I don't know about you, but I don't have that time, and I'm not going to basically dedicate my entire day to feeding myself. I, I mean, I'm really trying to finish up my book. I'm so close. <laughs> and if I were to just plan my entire day around food and eating and getting the right nutrients in, and I need this much spinach to make sure I get my iron levels, and I need this much, you know, this many oranges to hit my vitamin C and strawberries and all these other things. That's, it's kind of ridiculous. One, you'd be eating a ton of food. Yeah, it's healthy food, but you'd be eating a ton of food. You'd be spending a crap load of money on trying to get the right kind of food into your body and the right, you know, um, ratios of everything. And do you have any idea how hard that is on your digestive system? I mean, your digestive system, your intestines are going to be working over time, so much so to try and break all this food down. Um, Katie says, as a mom and a salon owner and a wife, I don't have time to eat 10 times a day. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, I don't have time to eat 10 times a day either. And the other thing is that, again, I'm a mom too. I have three kids. They're six, eight, and 10. I, I mean, I have to keep those little bodies alive and fed and well-fed. How am I supposed to do that? You know, if I'm doing it for just me, that's a full-time job for one person. I'd have to hire three times, you know, three other chefs full time just to keep us all fed. Um, to me, that's not an efficient use of my time and resources. We'll say that. Not that you can't do it. Again, I think it is possible to do, but that is not where I'm going to choose to spend my time and resources. Now, the reason why you have to consume so much food and so much more than we normally used to is because of this is what I, I jotted some things down, soil depletion. So the reason why you need to supplement into your diet is because the food today does not have the same nutrients as it did years ago. The reason is because of soil depletion. Um, and it's part of the agriculture, you know, uh, you know, how things are grown, how food is produced, all these other things. So this is, again, I'm not even touching the subject of processed foods. I'm not even, I'm not even going there because processed foods are, in my opinion, not real food. You know, it's just a way to keep your belly full, but not actually feeding your body nutrients, if that makes sense. So when people talk about nutrient-dense food, what is that? It means per calorie or per ounce of food, you are getting like so much nutrient packed into your body that your body's absorbing, using, and taking advantage of. So that's a nutrient-dense food. You know, something like an avocado could be considered a nutrient-dense food. You know, superfoods, that's what they call superfoods. You know, oh, super, it's so super. It's got a superhero cape, and it's flying around doing all the super things for you. Woo! So it's got a lot of vitamins and minerals and everything else packed in there for you. Gummy bears, not a nutrient-dense food. Although I do like gummy bears. Or, you know what I mean? Like, these are, there's a difference in the food that you're eating. Crackers, not a nutrient-dense food. 
Although I do like crackers sometimes, you know what I mean? Okay, so I'm going on a little tangent. Um, but food today does not have the same nutrients in it that it did years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago. So in order to get the same nutrients you would 100 years ago, you'd have to eat, you know, it's something like 43 bowls of spinach today for one bowl of spinach 100 years ago. You know, there's ratios and there's information out there like that. That's crazy. Who's going to eat 43 bowls of spinach? Ugh, yikes. You spend half the time eating and the other half of the time in the bathroom. Anyway, <clears throat> nutrient-dense foods here are, are, being, are at risk because of soil depletion. Now, here's the biggest thing that I don't think people talk about enough in diving into the soil depletion, how this comes about, and why this is important for you. So soil depletion, what that means is that the food that is grown has been found scientifically, been found to be less protein, less calcium, less phosphorus, less iron, less vitamin B, less vitamin C. Those are the main things. There's other things that they're deficient in, but these things are the main things that they're deficient in. So that's a really important thing. Also, if you're a vegetarian or vegan or something like that, and if you're, if you're mainly eating a plant-based diet, you need to understand that if you're not supplementing some type of additional protein source, if you're just trying to get that from whole foods, ooh, yikes, good luck. It's going to be really, really tough for you to get the nutrients you need, to get the protein levels you need from the plants alone without adding in an additional protein source because the protein just isn't there in the numbers that it used to be. So hopefully that, <clears throat> that kind of makes sense there. Protein's important for, and I talk about this a lot, so I just kind of made a general statement in terms of energy. Protein's important for the energy. Calcium is important for, you know, bones, bone growth, muscles, uh, muscle function. Phosphorus, um, I don't want there to be a glare there. Phosphorus is really important for your bones, kidneys, muscles, and your nerves. So the, one of the things that can be hard and you've been thinking like, okay, how do I know if I'm deficient in these vitamins? How do I know? If you're not supplementing in some way, you're going to be deficient in this in, in some areas. That's just, you're just not getting it in your diet and your body is not able to absorb it. People who also have um, absorption um, issues uh, or uh, some type of vitamin metabolism disorder or something like that, they also have to really watch their levels because their body's going to be deficient in these things very, very easily. Um, iron. Iron here as well. That's another thing that's really deficient in our food, which is shocking because you're thinking you can get iron from red meat and from all those other things. Anemia is the most common deficiency worldwide, and it's a deficiency of iron, you know, and very necessary for all these functions of the body, but I just basically, you know, red blood cells, yay, okay. Vitamin B, really important for cell metabolism, and then vitamin C, really important besides immune system and all these other things that people kind of generally think of, cell repair and regrowth. So very important things when we're talking about soil depletion and you not getting the right nutrients in your body. And how do you really know? Or people will take a vitamin and be like, I've been taking vitamins for three days. I didn't feel anything different. Well, you're not going to. That's not how it works. First, you need to take time to have your body actually uptake those levels. If you're deficient in, in a certain vitamin, you know, vitamin C, th that's a water-soluble vitamin that can be readily absorbed into the system a lot faster and be uploaded faster than a vitamin like vitamin D, which vitamin D is technically a hormone. That takes at least three months to have a shift and a change. So there's a big difference there in terms of what vitamin you're deficient in and what you're adding to your diet and how long it's going to take to change. So when we talk about if you're not supplementing and you're not having anything additional and you're trying to get all your nutrients from your food, you can. It's just really, really freaking tough. And you risk being deficient in a lot of these areas here. So again, if you're like, oh, I'm taking a vitamin, but I don't necessarily feel different, you might not feel different or you might be feeling like more energy or you might be sleeping better because all of a sudden your vitamin C levels are better and your cells are able to repair and, re and regrow better. But it's hard to sort of categorize that and quantify that feeling. It's very subjective. So that's the thing people have a hard time with. Oh, I'm taking a vitamin. You know, is it a good quality vitamin or not? If it is a good quality vitamin, you should be at some point along the path of taking this vitamin, be feeling some type of improvement in some area of your health or life because you will be having an improvement in these things. I'm not sick as often. I am recovering faster from injuries or you know, things like that. But those are only things that you will know yourself. 
Um, just a quick, you know, side note on vitamins and supplements and things like that. And if you're getting extra protein in, you really get what you pay for. If you're going to the store and you're grabbing the cheapest thing off the shelf, you're pretty much getting expensive urine because your body's not absorbing it and it's just coming right out. Those, the absorption rate for a lot of those things off the shelf is about 3%. Yay. So you're almost better off buying 43 bags of spinach and eating it <laughs> in terms of trying to get your iron in. So very, very big difference in terms of what you're going to be getting, what to put in your body. Oh, good morning, Randy. Um, and really what to be looking for. So this is, this is a really big debated topic. Do I need to supplement? Do I need extra nutrients? And the short answer is yes, you really do. If you're going to be fueling your body the way that it needs to be fueled, if you want your optimal health, then yes, you need supplements and you need different nutrients in your body. A lot of times, and I talk to people about, you know, either losing weight or getting to their healthy weight and people have a hard time getting there because they're not getting the right vitamins in their body. Your body has to get to a healthy point first before it can make any advances in weight loss or increased energy or all these other things. If you're not even getting your body to a healthy point, you're not going to get beyond that. So short answer, yes, you do need some kind of supplements because of the soil depletion, because you're not going to be getting these vitamins, which affect everything else. And that affects your overall health and weight loss ability. So oh, that was a lot. Hopefully I didn't, sometimes I feel like I word vomit or like too much or I go on little tangents. Like I take a little side route. I'm like, oh look, I want to talk about this a lot more. Let's talk about vitamin C for another hour. And then I'm like, no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, anyway, so if anybody has any questions, please, please let me know. If you would like more information on supplements or where, what to look for in a supplement, if you're looking at labels, if you're concerned about um, what you're taking in your body, if you're like, you know, I do want more energy or I have been trying to lose weight and it hasn't been working out for me, maybe it's because I'm so tired or maybe it's because I haven't been able to get the right nutrients in my body. Um, I, I had a conversation with somebody yesterday who was like, yes, I've been doing a, you know, a shake and there's some vitamins and nutrients in it. And I'm like, that's good, but you're not really getting the amount of protein that it says on the package. And it's because of the type of protein it is and because of the way it's processed. How do you know these things? How do regular people know these things? You don't, you're not expected to know these things, but really if you're going to be in charge of your health and make a big change, you got to kind of step outside a little bit and do different things and, you know, essentially follow different recommendations than what you're used to. So it's uncomfortable and sometimes it can be tough to really understand if you're doing the right thing, but it's going to get a completely different result for you. So soil depletion, look at all that stuff I wrote backwards. <laughs> I'm getting good. I don't think I turned any P's or B's or D's around this time. I did that last time. Anyway, everybody have a great Thursday. Um, I've got some really exciting events and things coming up. So again, I have an event on November 5th that I'm putting together. It's called Women Rise. Really, really fantastic event. A lot of really wonderful women speakers. We're going to be having a self-defense um, portion of it as well. So uh, there's so many things that women need to know about living in our society today. So there's going to be completely priceless information presented at this event. If you have questions, let me know. Um, but I'll be posting more about that. And everybody have a great Thursday.